Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul Conti here, and I wanted to do a little bit of, uh, might be a little preemptive, according to some people, but some look at the contagion points and summoning for Nurgle uh, after we get uh, the new edition coming down the pike. Um, I feel like at this point, we know that the Nurgle book was designed with the new edition in mind. And we know now that summoning is no longer going to cost reinforcement points in the future. So putting two and two together, I think it's pretty safe to start some speculation on what Nurgle will look like going forward with contagion points and summoning things and what some changes to our lists might look like. First up, just wanted to quickly go over the Contagion Point chart uh, and summoning. I believe you can also get the Exalted Great Unclean one as well. Um, I think it has uh, a Contagion Point summoning cost on its War Scroll. Um, but I just haven't included that one in here. Uh, this is just the actual uh, chart out of the book, just transcribed. Uh, and I added in um, the points for each unit as well as um, how many points per contagion point. Um, so just sort of dividing that out and figuring out like what the value is that like per contagion point that you're spending. Um, so a couple of interesting things pop out about this. Uh, looks like one of the better values is actually to grab 20 Plague Bearers. Um, that is a pretty strong value. The worst deal is to grab one Nurgling. Um, but being able to summon things with Contagion Points I think is going to be really valuable. Um, I think that we're mostly going to see a lot of Plague Bearers and Drones and occasionally popping out maybe a Poxbringer uh, or uh, one of the other heralds in sort of mid or late game for whatever thing you might need. Uh, but I think the you know, biggest things I think is going to be plague bearers for bodies on objectives uh, because that's something that Nurgle has definitely struggled with currently with a lot of builds, unless you're going with the bazillion plague bearer get build. Um, yeah, uh, it, if you're relying on Blight Kings, uh, you really are going to need those extra bodies for objectives. So, uh, overall, just quick analysis, and this is just based on the points that are in the book, and we know from the last General's Handbook that the, uh, the points in this book don't necessarily mean anything, and they could be radically changed in the next General's Handbook. Um which is coming out in a couple of weeks. So some of this will be sort of invalidated, but I don't think many of these things are gonna change all that much. The overall average on the chart was uh, 8.55 contagion points uh, per point. Um, I'm sorry, back that up, reverse it. 8.55 points per contagion point was the average value on the chart. Uh, for everything that is uh, 14 contagion points to summon, your average is 7.62, and everything that is 21 or more averages 10.89. Um, there's a non-linear relationship in the contagion point chart, so there's some value built in there to waiting for more contagion points and dropping them in one thing rather than just spamming them out. Um, so just for purposes of analysis, I'm just gonna assume the value uh, of one contagion point is eight points uh, based on these averages. Um, and that's, you know, just to kind of use it as a yardstick for figuring other stuff out. Um, so just to review for everybody, uh, that may or may not have the book and just sort of to keep all of this fresh in your head. Um, the Contagion Point System. You earn Contagion Points at the beginning of your hero phase. 
and your summoning that you do with the contagion points occurs at the end of your movement phase. You have four basic ways to earn contagion points. Three if you have units in your own territory, three for units in enemy territory, one for having units uh, unopposed in a territory, which I think that's not going to happen very often. Um, and then you get D3 per feculent gnarl maw that doesn't have enemy troops near it. There's also some other ways to get contagion points. The Living Plague Command trait gives you one contagion point on a four up for each enemy unit within one inch of your general during your hero phase. It also kicks off a mortal wound to that unit. Uh, so, fairly unreliable. Um, this might be interesting throwing it on a great unclean one that you want to go slam into your opponent's face uh, and have them be something that your enemy is going after and trying to uh, get them to attack. Uh, Horticula Slimex actually is going to start having some real value, I think, in 2nd uh, Edition Age of Sigmar. Because he gives you, once per game, a free Feculent Gnarl Maw along with him. Uh, and he pops down that Feculent Gnarl Maw at the beginning of the hero phase as well, not in the usual time that stuff gets summoned. So if you're running Horticula Slimex, you get to do things in the quote-unquote beginning of the hero phase in any order that you choose, so you can pop out that feculent gnarl maw so you have the 2d3 at the beginning of your first turn so that's an interesting one i think he is going to become a staple going forward of a lot of nurgle lists if everything stays about where we currently have it the tally band of nurgle battalion if you have uh the maxed out uh, units in the battalion not maxed out everything but maxed out plague bearers and plague drones to seven uh, you get one extra contagion point in each of your hero phases so that's a potential five extra the Nurgle's Menagerie Battalion uh, lets Horticulus use his ability to get a uh, free feculent gnarl maw every turn not just once per game so that one's pretty interesting Epidemius, the tally man of Nurgle, uh, gives you one contagion point per turn after 21 models have been slain. Uh, and then the Lord of Plagues gives you one contagion point anytime he does seven or more damage in one turn in the combat phase. So he's a really interesting one as well. I have actually used him as my champion in Path to Glory and really liked him a lot and with the ability to use command abilities on heroes that are not your general his ability to just sort of spit out mortal wounds in the hero phase uh, I think makes him interesting he might end up in some lists uh, just as a value pick uh, especially since he can potentially also give you some extra contagion points so, um, the value proposition on all of these different ways of getting contagion points. Now, you can buy feculent gnarl maws with contagion. They they cost seven contagion points. They give you D three a turn. You can't use them. You won't gain the contagion from them until turn two if you summon one turn one so your maximum is four turns with that second feculent gnarl maw if you're summoning it through a purchase with contagion points you're getting d3 a turn times four turns is eight contagion points so i think the moral of the story is on average you're basically going to break even if you do that so i don't think 
that's really the best buy unless you're also using the feculent gnarl maw that you're popping out for some other purpose as well like um you know blocking lanes or something like that making it it a terrain obstruction for your opponent um horticulus slimex he is as i said before he's a really good value he's get, giving you a free feculent gnarl maw and it's for the full five turns of the game so it's uh an average of 10 contagion per game assuming that it's unopposed by your opponent so the contagion is worth like 80 points that he generates off that feculent gnarl maw on average and he's a 220 point hero currently um so he comes out to like a net cost of 140 points and if you look at his stat lines he would be outstanding at 140 points. And even at 220, he was uh, something that I was kind of eyeing up a little bit. He's not quite there in the current environment, but getting a free feculent Gnarl Maw and uh, getting all of that extra contagion, I think is going to make him almost an auto-include in the future. Uh, the Living Plague command trait it's super swingy super variable um you're probably gonna grab a few contagion out of it per game maybe uh not really anything to write home about but i think considering the other options that we have available for um for uh our command traits uh it might not be a bad pick um Epidemius, he's super variable and he only generates a maximum of five per contagion per game uh, and he's 200 points. Uh, so assuming his points stay the same, he's pretty terrible. Uh, and Lord of Plagues, as I mentioned before, he can theoretically generate up to 10 contagion per game uh, because he's generating his contagion uh, off phase. He's like the only thing that really generates contagion off phase he's generating it when he does damage in the combat phase assuming 10 combat phases per game theoretically he could potentially generate 10 for you uh on a 140 point hero that is uh pretty tanky and strong on his own so um i like him he's interesting he if he's gonna slot into your list anyway uh, definitely pretty good. Uh, Tally Band of Nurgle. Um, you're going to get five contagion points per game out of this if you uh, go that route. Um, so it's not a huge boost. But if you're going to be running a Taliban anyway, it's a nice little buff. Um, Nurgle's Menagerie currently at 240 points. Um, it's giving you four extra Feculent Gnarl Maws on top of what Horticulus will give you. Um, it's going to average a total of 30 extra contagion per game. And 10 of those you're theoretically getting from Horticulus anyway. So it's really only adding 20 extra contagion. So it's adding a value of 160 points of contagion. So the Battalion is still net 80 points, and the Battalion, other than that, doesn't really do anything. Um, it debuffs your opponent's bravery, which, uh, considering that the um, Inspiring Presence in 2nd Edition is going to get a significant debuff, uh, bravery bombs might matter, but I'm not entirely sold on uh, Nurgle's Man. So... What are our efficient ways of gaining Contagion? 
Horticulus Slimux. He's giving you the free feculent Gnarl Maw, and he's with that, it's going to generate between 5 and 15 extra contagion per game. Plus, he's a pretty strong, survivable hero. He's got, a, uh, I believe, 8 wounds, 3 up save, and uh, he's disgustingly resilient because he's a demon. Plus, he's got a few other little abilities, and his stat line is actually not bad for uh, his damage output. So, he's pretty solid all around. Um, if anything, I would expect that he might get a bump up in his points cost uh, with the uh, new General's Handbook, just to reflect how much value you're getting out of getting a free Feculent Gnarl Maw. If, he, if all of the points stay the same, I think he's basically an auto-include in almost every list. Um, Living Plague, it's free and variable um it's gonna mostly give you contagion later in the game um i'm it's i i let me put it this way in general i'm not that impressed with the command traits available to nurgle so it's Either this or I believe it's Grandfather's Blessing, the the one that lets you move the wheel up or back one. Um, I think that's generally what you're going to be looking at for um, what you grab for command traits. So the the question is: Is it more valuable for you to get to move the wheel once per game or get a little bit of extra contagion? I don't know. Um, moving the wheel may become more valuable because of the increased unbind range. So you're going to be less likely to be able to get off your spell to move the wheel. Um, but we're going to have to see how the metagame shakes out in the future to see how that actually goes. Uh, Lord of Plagues, I think he's pretty good in general and may just be solid to throw in there. Um, when he's hanging out near uh, Blight Kings, he lets them reroll once to hit, which is actually like surprisingly good. Um, that is not to be underestimated, I don't think. Um, and it's in like a seven-inch bubble around him, so I think he's a pretty solid choice that is going to end up in my lists uh, more in the future than it currently does. Um, and Taliban of Nurgle, I think, is... It, it, it's a list that might work. Um, if you're going to run the Taliban anyway, um, it's... Uh, you're not going to scoff at the extra contagion that it gives you. I don't think I would run the Taliban just for the extra contagion, but it makes the Taliban a better value proposition than it was before. And it was a pretty good value proposition already anyway. Now it's just a question of do you, like, max out seven units of drones and plague bearers? Um, and drones have been proving themselves to be very valuable. I just don't know if uh, you're necessarily going to want to run your list that way. Because um, you're going to end up with a very, very skewed uh, demon heavy list with not a lot of other options in it uh, things that are terrible values Epidemius I mean he's a terrible hero he's expensive and he's providing very little contagion like theoretically a maximum of five like he's just not good uh, Nurgle's uh, excuse me menagerie Nurgle's menagerie uh, it's really expensive and it doesn't give you a lot of benefits. Um, and to really max out the... Uh, to max out all of the options in there, uh, you really rely on Horticulus Slimex surviving the whole game and all of your trees being unopposed by your opponent the whole game. And I don't think that's really something worth banking on. So I think that's not that great of a value deal there. 
So, what is summoning actually going to look like? Um, I think my plan, it like, this is just sort of assume, run Horticulus Slimex, drop a second Feculent Gnarl Maw turn one. So turn one, you've got units in your own territory, you're unopposed in your territory, and you've got two trees. So it's going to average eight Contagion. Your future turns... You'll probably have troops in your opponent's territory, troops in your territory. You're probably not going to be unopposed anywhere, but you've got two trees, so you'll average 10 contagion per game. With other miscellaneous things and variables, I would say you're going to average about 50 contagion points per game. So that gives you, drum roll, 45 plague bearers. Or six drones and five plague bearers, or uh, twenty-five plague bearers and three drones. Uh, you're seeing the direction that I'm thinking in here, um, and it's very possible to drop a unit of twenty plague bearers for free on turn two, which I think is a really big deal. Um, one of the things that I think Nurgle really struggles with is having a a number of bodies to um, hold objectives and things like that. Um, and this really makes it much better. Um, it really gives you the ability to run a, a really Blight King heavy list and then say, I'm going to use my Contagion to summon plague bearers that are going to hold on to the objectives for me um and it kind of it makes sense it it's what it kind of feels like works uh currently i've seen some lists where people were running a combination of uh big blocks of plague bearers and blight kings and you know use the blight kings as hammers and the plague bearers as anvils and things to hold objectives um i think you're not going to have to make that choice as much in the future so it's going to be very very interesting um of course all of this is still spec because we don't have everything from the new edition yet we could have some major points adjustments we don't know what the future metagame is really going to look like uh, and we don't really know for sure yet. We don't have all of the rules as of the time that I'm recording this of what the second edition uh, rules, restrictions regarding summoning might be. It seems like it's a free-for-all, but you never know what tricks might be hidden up their sleeve. Uh, so that's it for now, kids. Uh, it's been fun. I'm excited for the future of summoning stuff with Nurgle's Contagion points and using it for wild and crazy things. Uh, let me know what you think, and I will catch you all later.